I've talked about Myanmar's military taking power in February of this year, how they ousted the government of Aung San Suu Kyi and her National League for Democracy, and how they really had no choice but to do this. Aung San Suu Kyi and her National League for Democracy party were created by and for U.S. interests. Uh, Aung San Suu Kyi herself had British and Australian citizens as her top advisors. These were people instructing her on rewriting the country's constitution, restructuring the country's legal system, uh, and its trade policies. I talked about how the Western media has been lying about the violent mobs that took to the streets shortly thereafter, and I warned people that they would devolve into armed militant groups, and we would see a replay of the chaos that took hold of Libya and Syria from 2011 onward. And now that's exactly what's happening. Even the Western media can't pretend anymore uh, that the so-called peaceful pro-democracy opposition is now armed with war weapons and fighting Myanmar's police and military in the streets. Uh, and now the next step is uh, taking a look at the atrocities being carried out by the so-called peaceful pro-democracy opposition. This is from the UN in Myanmar. They're alarmed at the sharp deterioration of human rights, of the human rights environment. Uh, one such case is the discovery of two mass graves in Miyawadi Township, Kayan State, containing the human remains of 25 people who had reportedly been detained on the 31st of May by the Karen National Defense Organization. Uh, this Karen militant group. It's, it's one of these groups that American citizen David Eubanks and his Free Burma Rangers uh, provide military training to and logistical aid to. And David Eubanks and the Free Burma Rangers are in regular contact with the U.S. Embassy in Myanmar, but also the consulate in Chiang Mai, Thailand. Uh, Chiang Mai, where David Eubank is actually based and crosses over the border into Myanmar from. They've gone from violent mobs in the streets to these armed militant groups fighting uh, with war weapons in the streets. Now they're carrying out these atrocities. As a matter of fact, if you're familiar with these ethnic armed groups that are doing this in, in more remote areas, uh, they do stuff like this all the time. I have sources that contact me and send me the most horrific videos imaginable of what they do to prisoners, uh, even recruits uh, from the urban centers who went to go train with them to join the so-called federal army, and then they wanted to go home because it was too real for them, and they wouldn't let them. Uh, and so they are carrying out atrocities like this on a regular basis. This isn't just an isolated incident. And again, this is exactly like in Libya and Syria, where we were told, well, uh, you know, these are moderate rebels. There's a couple of uh, factions that might be a little extreme, but most of them are, are moderate rebels and we can trust them. And it's better for the future of those countries that they take over eventually. It's not true. They're extremists. Uh, they are brutal. They are carrying out atrocities. And if ever they seize power, it'll end up exactly like Libya, a failed state uh, with uh, racist, genocidal violence indefinitely. That's what Myanmar is looking at. It's not me saying this. It's not Myanmar's military saying this. It's the Western media who's trying to cover up and support the opposition in Myanmar, who is saying this. So this is the Reuters article that I've pointed out before. Boycott and bombings mar Myanmar's new school year. And they talk about how the opposition is blowing up schools to stop people from going there because they wanted a, a national strike. Uh, they wanted workers and students to go on strike, and they wouldn't. So they started targeting the, the places where people were working and studying so that they would be fearful and, and not go because of fear. And Myanmar Now, funded by the U.S. government through the National Endowment for Democracy, this article from early June 2021, as spat of killings continues, anti-junta forces warn of more to come. And this is an opposition media platform interviewing... The, the leaders of these so-called People's Defense Forces who admit that they targeted a school. They, they admit that they targeted this uh, number 32 basic education high school 
in Mandalay. And they said they're going to carry out uh, attacks on government offices, electricity offices, and courts, and they, they warned people not to go there. They also said that uh, the only civilian targets would be officials and others, and others who have collaborated with the regime. What does that mean? Well, that means anyone that is not part of their opposition movement, who's not joining them, uh, that's what they're talking about, and they will kill you. And so here is a, a, a July 1st article from Myanmar now, snack vendor accused of acting as military informant shot dead in, in Insen Township. And they're talking about just some guy who's selling snacks, probably uh, not very well off, perceived as supporting the government, so someone murdered him. And that, so that's what the opposition is doing. There are death squads out in the streets, hunting down anyone who's not joining their movement, killing anyone who, whether real or imagined, is working with the government. Uh, and just in general, destroying the country. And, and, and again, it is exactly like the US-backed militancies in Libya and Syria from 2011 onward. And I, I still get comments to this day from people in Myanmar, allegedly in Myanmar, claiming that uh, I'm just repeating government propaganda. No, I'm telling you what your own opposition media is saying, what your own opposition leaders are admitting to doing. This is the, the, the worst part about these opposition groups that the U.S. backs is that they, they are completely out of touch with the reality. And in their minds, they really do feel like murdering a poor guy selling snacks on the street is justified if he didn't join their movement. They really think that, and they don't even try to cover it up. It's, it's unreal, and it's very disturbing. And again, for, for Myanmar, it's a tragedy. Uh, but for Thailand, next door to Myanmar, it's a national security threat. To, to the rest of Southeast Asia, it's a national security threat. To China, it is a national security threat. It's a deliberate attempt to create a failed state in the middle of Asia to derail the region's rise. The US is doing this very deliberately uh, and the region needs to unite to stop this. Uh, and instead what's happening is the US is pressuring groups in, in each country and using their opposition groups that they are funding to pressure the region to aid in the destruction of Myanmar rather than to avoid it. Uh, if you thought this video was useful, please like and share it. Think about subscribing. It's free to do and it helps the channel grow. Check the video description for the articles that I covered in this video. If you don't believe me that the opposition media is saying this, read the article. It's, it's even worse than, than I say. There's also ways in the video description to help support my work, uh, like by becoming a Patreon member. You can support my work month to month. There's extra content for Patreon supporters. There's also lines of communication where we can share ideas and kind of build a community around this work. To everyone who has been helping me in absolutely every way, thank you very much. This wouldn't be possible without that help. And as always, thank you for watching.